today I am sharing a very highly requested video with you. I am going to show you how I store my fabric and my patterns. Um, I've had a lot of requests especially for how I store my PDF patterns. As you know I am huge on PDF patterns and 99.9% .9 of my collection is PDF patterns. Uh, so I know that some people can be put off them. Um, especially with knowing how to store them. There are a couple of good ways um, you can do it. I think it was We Are The Fabric Store. Um, I think that's what they're called. They have a really awesome way to store fabrics. Um, and they roll them up and put them into baskets, which would be one of my preferred options. But unfortunately, I don't have enough space for that. So I'm going to show you how I store them and how I put them together. And I'm also going to show you how I store my fabric and how I um, put that together as well. So uh, like I said, this has been a highly requested video. So I'm so glad I'm finally getting around to film it for you guys. Um, what's well, been happening this week? I have had a pretty chill week this week. I haven't been feeling 100%. So um, I've just been working on a few orders for Little Miss Lorraine and not doing a lot of sewing actually. Um, I just haven't had the motivation all the time really to do any. Um, I am however wearing something new. This is the Isla Top which is a new pattern that was released by Tasuti Fabrics. I completely fell in love with the idea of the pattern um, and thought that I'd give it a go. This did not turn out as well as I would have hoped. Um, I think because of the fabric choice and also because I'm really bad at sewing on my overlocker so I'm okay with like straight lines and that sort of thing but anything where there's a curve uh, which this has got a couple I'm just really bad at so um, the neckline for instance is terrible on this um, so I think I might next time I do it I might use my sewing machine. So this is what it looks like anyway. It has got the dolman, I think they're called dolman sleeves and has a three quarter um, sleeve length which I absolutely love and then at the back I'll see if I can show you. It has the yoke on there and then it connects at the back so this is like one big pattern piece with the sleeves and everything and then there's a yoke bit at the back so I think there are three pieces overall not including the neckline uh, so I am going to make another one so the fabric that I used for this um, was a combed cotton jersey which I think was too stiff for the pattern it just doesn't drape as nicely as the one the Tasuti show on their blog but they also use an absolutely gorgeous Italian um, viscose or something which is $36 a meter so as much as I'd love to make it out of that I just cannot afford that so I found this fabric at Spotlight it is a stretch jersey it's in this gorgeous grey mull and I think it will look perfect in this pattern so I'm really excited to give that one a go I haven't gotten to any of the projects yet that I said I was going to make my last video but I'm hoping this weekend I'll get a little bit of time to sew. So let's jump in to today's video. I'm going to show you how I store my fabrics first and then I'll move on to the patterns. So if you saw my uh, sewing room tour video you will have already seen my cutting table. I absolutely love it and has been one of the best additions to my sewing room. Uh, so this is where I keep 99.9% .9 of my fabric. Um, most of my smaller fabrics and a couple of my larger ones that won't fit in my filing cabinet which is the other place that I store them. So I'll just talk you through what I've got stored in here and then I'm going to show you how I get them to look like this. So first of all on the side here you'll see this is all of my bigger fabrics. So my really thick scuba knits um, or my double ponty knits or um, things that I have a lot of meterage of. So these will not fit in my current filing cabinet and I'll explain why when I get to that one. So for now I keep them here. Any scrap fabrics or current projects are kept in the boxes and I've got some more on the other side as well. And then on this side and the other side I keep my sort of smaller fabric pieces. Uh, so as much as I can I try and put them on um, these but they don't always work. So I store 
my patterns like uh, my fabric like this sorry and I saw this idea on Pinterest and absolutely loved it and it means that I can really easily see what fabric I have just at a quick glance I don't have to you know be sorting through drawers or boxes or anything like that so I'm going to show you how I get them like this but um yeah I really love having them like this because I can see them easily and also they look really pretty so I tend to keep them in groups so for example these are actually really small fabric um samples that I got from a friend so there's heaps of them so I've kept all of those together uh, then here I've got like larger bits of fabric like flannel and a couple of other things that I'm not sure what they are <laughs> Um, but sort of all similar like bigger cottons as well and then these are all cottons so I've got um, most of these are about a meter um, but yeah I've got them all stored here and then on this side I have my sort of thicker most of these are upholstery fabrics and my gorgeous um, uh, Vietnamese silk and also my chambray because that's a little bit heavier um, down here are my knits so all of these are knit fabrics or stretch fabrics in some shape or form down here um, a few scrappy ones and all of my lining fabrics and then up here just a selection of um, like larger cottons and dress fabrics the other place that I store my fabrics is in my filing cabinet so Anything that's bigger that I can fit in here, um, it goes in my bottom drawer. Um, so what I've done is taken the um, suspension files and cut them in half and then just draped the fabric over them. So this is definitely one of my other preferred ways of keeping my larger fabrics, but unfortunately not all of my fabrics fit into this drawer. Um, and I use the top bit for patterns, which I'll show in a second. So I can't keep everything in here. Um, but I find this is another really easy way just to see exactly what you've got um, and it's a really neat way to organise everything. So I'm going to show you how I um, get my fabrics to look like they are when they're on um, the boards. So like I said, I found this idea on Pinterest and absolutely loved it. I just love that you can see exactly what fabrics you've got and it is really easy to um, open them out and then put them back on again. So. I found these whiteboards on eBay. I'll link the seller down below if I can or something similar. So I think they are um, like a magazine card, I think that's what it's called. So, you know, for comic book collectors or magazine collectors, they sort of put this behind it and then they can store all of their comics um, in plastic sleeves. So they weren't that expensive, but they were the perfect thing to use um, to do this. Um, with so what I do and because my boxes are not the same size as this I do have to trim a slight bit off the top but that's no big deal um, and then I've got my fabric here so what I'm going to do is completely open out the fabric so there is three meters of this one so this one may be a little bit thick um, but I thought it would be a good way to show you how I do it so I've opened up my fabric and this one is already folded in half lengthwise. So once you've done that, you can fold it in half again. And then what you want to do is you want to get your bit of cardboard and just check to see whether it's going to fit around there. Um, this one is close enough, but if it wasn't going to fit on there, you could just fold it over a smidge um, more, maybe a couple of inches or so, and then fold it on. Um, so then what you do is just really easy. You just um, flip it over and then just roll it up. Um, most of the time, I don't need to secure this with anything, but if it was a smaller bit that only just wrapped around, I have been using bobby pins um, as opposed to pins just because um, the pins can leave marks in there. But for something this big you shouldn't really need to use anything. And then it's all on there and I'll put this um, into one of those sections and it will just all hold itself together. And then when I want to pull it out I can just open it. I could just 
cut it as it is, but I tend to just open up the whole thing and then cut it again. Um, it takes two seconds to wrap it back up again, so it's really no big deal. So in regards to patterns, I keep all of my patterns in this filing cabinet as well, so they take up the whole top drawer, although it is starting to get quite full in there, so I think I might have to invest in another filing cabinet so I can split the fabric and the patterns. So this is the drawer that I keep them in. And I'll explain to you how I sort them in a moment, but I'll just show you um, how my drawer is sorted. So they are all housed in plastic sleeves and I've got little tabs um, for all of them. So dresses, door stops, bags, jackets, pants, there's one for skirts as well somewhere, tops. Um, and this just makes it really easy just to go to that section and find what I need and pull it out and then everything has a spot. So I was keeping them in ring binders but they just got way too full and it was hard to find them and this way it's just really easy. I can just pick it out and see exactly what it is and if that's what I want I'll take it out and it doesn't get too hard to find things like I said the only problem with this is I have a lot of patterns now so I'm starting to run out of room so I think I might have to get another filing cabinet soon so what I want to show you now is exactly how I keep all of my um, PDF patterns organized so there are three sections to each of these um, little plastic pockets so I'm gonna get it out and show you exactly what I put in there so This is a well-used pattern, you can see, obviously. Um, so there are three different aspects to what's in here. So the first thing that I do is I always print off the front page and usually the sizing chart as well um, to put in here just so that I can see really easily exactly what is in there. So this is the ultimate pencil skirt. Um, and it's good because I can tell by the front um, who it's by as well really easily. So that's the first thing I do. Um, then the next thing that's in there is obviously the pattern pieces. So this is the PDF. It is folded as much as I can get it folded. Um, so it does make it quite bulky but like I said I don't really have the space to do exactly what I want so this works for now. And then the third aspect are the pattern pieces. So once I have traced off the pattern, I trace off all of my PDF patterns. I know some people um, think that's kind of pointless with PDF patterns, but I just don't want to have to print them and stick them again. So I trace all of mine off onto tracing paper, which you will have seen in my how to use PDFs video. Um, so that's the next thing that goes in there. So um, pretty well what I do is I have these plastic sleeves they are a heavier um, weight plastic sleeve. They're not just like a thin, um, like 75 micron. They, I think they're 100 and something. I'll link them down below. Um, and so these are really good because they're much tougher and it's good because I take them out and put them in all the time. And as you can see, this is one of my most well used patterns. So I want something that's sturdy. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put this in there and the sizing chart if I have one of those. Then I'll pop the PDF into there as well. And then if I have enough room, I will put this in with all of these. But if the PDF is too bulky or there are a couple of different versions of the pattern, I will um, staple on another sheet, um, another plastic sleeve to keep all of the bits and pieces in there. So for me, I find this is a really easy way to store my PDF patterns and it means they are really well organized and I can just lift it out and see, yep, ultimate pencil skirt or um, ultimate shift dress as well. Um, and it's just a really easy way for me to see exactly what they are. So for example, for this one, the ultimate shift dress has got a couple of different pattern pieces. So this is for the first little sheet and then I'll have another one for the second sheet. So I find this is a really easy way to store them and I always know um, that they're gonna be in there and yeah, just easy to see exactly what they are and um, yes. I hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes look at how I store my fabric and my patterns. If you have any questions, please um, write them down below and I'll try and answer them as best I can for you. I'm also going to put some pictures on the blog, so if you want to have a closer look at anything, you can um, follow the link that will be in the description box down below. I really like the system I've got now. It's taken me a few years to um, work out exactly what I want and I think that's the thing. What works for someone isn't going to work for someone else. So. 
try a, quite a few different things and see what works for you and what works for your space. That's the other problem is space. Um, so if, yeah, for me this works really well um, and I hope that maybe it's given you a few tips and tricks that you can take into your own sewing room. I will link anything that I've mentioned in the description box down below. Um, next week I have a really exciting tutorial for you so make sure you check back um, next week to watch that one. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!